I develop my own little terms for things these days. I find I do that a lot. One moment I'm slogging through another spreadsheet, and the next thing I know, I've spent half an hour drifting in my own thoughts on the company's time. Suicide Thursday is that time in the week when the memories of sun-kissed afternoons in the park have finally faded. But the next weekend, and the comfort of my partner's arms, still seem a desperately long way away. Symptoms express themselves in the form of despair, low self-worth and mounting irritation at my colleagues. This Thursday is especially bad. James is regaling us with tales of the latest barely legal wench to be lured into his clutches, and my to-do list remains frustratingly empty. As I contemplate another eight hours staring at the wall and flicking through news websites, an ear-splitting screech fills the office. As the sound intensifies, my colleagues groan and begin to grab their coats. With a world-weary sigh, I open the bottom drawer of my desk and take my trusty crossbow from its case. The sky begins to darken as a horde of wyverns swoop in to feed on the flesh of financial advisors. I always feel self-conscious as I put on my fluorescent beast warden tabard and begin directing people to the exits. However, taking a more proactive role in the office had been one of my objectives at mid-year, so here I am. Before I have time to start lowering the shutters over the windows, there's a terrible crash as one of the foul creatures races into the office. Alarms begin to go off, signalling integrity breaches in pricing and meeting room 7. They seem to move quicker these days in response to the new shutters. I know it's impossible, but I'm sure that they're learning. With the press of a button, I spark my first crossbow bolt into flames and take aim. The one in front of me looks like a female juvenile. She has her serpentine tail wrapped around a support pillar, and she's eating a mountain of sugary sweets that Rita bought in for her birthday. I'm a little ashamed at taking out such an easy target. It's only a child after all. But I haven't brought in any lunch today, and I'm going to be relying on those snacks to keep me going till dinner. I release a bolt into the centre of her chest. The flames illuminate the dark cavity where her heart should reside, and she writhes briefly before falling to the floor. As I check my six, I catch James out the corner of my eye. Two minutes ago, he was teaching the team about the finer points of sexting. Now the phone lies smashed and he's fighting for his life with another beast. The creature has him pinned to the floor of its front claws and is attempting to rip his throat out of its barbed tail. It's a male adult, I'd say. Perfectly capable of dismembering James and taking his remains back to feed the spawn at its nest. While this thought does momentarily comfort me, duty prevails and I dispatch the wyvern with a death shot to the eye, of which even I'm rather proud. While James is still pinned beneath the corpse, I fire a second bolt into his thigh, which produces a very satisfying scream. That'll teach him for hanging me out in front of the MD last week. I'll just put it down as a crossfire incident on the accident form. The shutters have finally come down, and the office is bathed in the clinical glow of strip lights. The space has been cleared of people, and all I can hear are the sounds of my own steady breathing and the occasional whimper from James. Soon the napalm team will arrive to secure the area around the building. Meeting room 7 is in my patrol zone, so I stalk over to investigate the breach. The door's closed. I try to look through the peephole, but something is obscuring it. I take a moment to steady my nerves before giving the door a good hard kick. I fall through into what remains of meeting room 7. The room is strewn with shattered and broken bodies, the remains of a best practice meeting of which only the minutes now survive. I have to crick my neck in order to stare into the eyes of the fiend that dealt out this grisly fate. It's a female, and it's a whopper. At least six metres long and two around, with burning yellow eyes the size of tennis balls. It slashes at me with one of its gargantuan claws, forcing me to drop to my knees. As I level the bow at its solar plexus, I wait just a moment for the target to fall into the ideal position. Suddenly, there's a flash of iron grey muscle. My crossbow is sent spinning across the room, and a two-inch long gouge in my arm is turning my new nylon work shirt scarlet. As I turn to face the door, I'm confronted by a second monster, my blood dripping from its tail. Well played, I think to myself. As I face my imminent death, I'm surprised by the admiration I feel for these creatures' ability to plan such a masterful ambush. There's nothing left to do but the manly act of curling into a bite-sized ball and awaiting my fate. At this moment, there's a blood-curdling screech, 
and it feels as though the door has fallen on top of me. I open my eyes to see that it's the body of the foe who is blocking my exit. From behind it, clutching her two-handed battle axe, is Chloe, the beast warden from e-marketing. She's been working here about a month now, and I managed to talk to her in a lift once for 30 seconds, which probably makes her my best friend in the office. I have the wind knocked out of me as she uses the corpse to launch herself in at the much larger beast, and in an act of controlled rage, she cleaves its head in twain. She kicks the vanquished fiend off and asks me if I'm alright. I mutter that I'm fine and something about checking the area, even though we both know the raid is over. I pick myself off the floor, ignoring her helping hand, and with a brief exclamation of thanks, I rush out of the room. I've never been that great at talking to women I kind of fancy, and it's hard not to fancy someone once you've seen them astride you, soaked in the blood of vanquished enemies. I probably won't talk to her for the rest of this month, but I know exactly what I'm going to be thinking about the next time I make love to my girlfriend. I wander off to the canteen to get myself a coffee.